Yes, the Crown Season 5 is now behind us, and it included a foreboding season finale. But now we look to Season 6. What should we expect to see in the final season? My name's Matt Rogers, and join me today as we take a look at what we're going to see covered in the show before the fictitious palace gates are closed forever. Now I'm bringing you all the latest news and updates on The Crown and delivering it straight to your subscription feed. So to stay up to date and support the channel, be sure to hit that like button, subscribe and ring that bell to not miss a single thing. We had to wait a full two years between seasons four and five, but luckily this time we're likely to only have to wait one year between five and six, with it having an estimated release date of November 2023. Season 6, the season that actually wasn't initially going to happen. Creator Peter Morgan and Netflix previously agreed that the show would only be five seasons, but after the unprecedented success of the show, Netflix confirmed a sixth and final season, which Morgan advised would allow them to flesh out the events of the 1990s and early 2000s. In my review of season 5, I described the season as solemn yet powerful, but knowing what's to come, we should prepare ourselves for an extremely dark and harrowing final season, and not just for the impending death of Princess Diana. But first I want to draw your attention to the 2006 film The Queen. Now this movie has an obvious link to The Crown and its subject matter, but what you may not know is that this movie actually is written by the creator of The Crown, Peter Morgan. So really, we at least know in part how season 6 will cover the events of Diana's death as Peter Morgan already wrote it for this movie. I'm expecting many similarities between the show and the movie, with the show obviously including more detail, due to it being a whole season rather than a movie with a runtime of less than two hours. In the film, we see Dame Helen Mirren earn her first Oscar as the Queen, navigating the immediate events following the princess's death. It shows a cold and shallow response from the palace, whilst Prime Minister Tony Blair encourages them to modernise and allow the people to mourn their princess. I doubt there is anyone who knows the British people more than I do, Mr Blair, nor who has greater faith in their wisdom and judgement encouraging an empathetic stance rather than a traditional one, which would have appeared inconsiderate to the millions who adored her. Modernising the monarchy of course being a major theme in season 5 of The Crown, and will no doubt continue focus next season. Although we got many strong performances from this film, the production quality is not what we've come to expect from The Crown, and the music is no good, but that really goes without saying considering the show has Netflix throwing hundreds of millions at it, and the film was working with 15 million. Interestingly, the actor who plays the Duke of Windsor in The Crown plays Charles in The Queen, and actually has quite a likeness, probably more so than Dominic West. Although the film is critically acclaimed, I found the devastating events portrayed in a lot less emotional light, and therefore the film was less impactful than the tone we've seen in The Crown. So I'm very much looking forward to seeing how these events play out in the series, and how the two interpretations compare, considering they have the same writer. If you want to know more about the life and death of Princess Diana, I've actually made a tribute video which I'll link on screen now if you want to check that out. But back to The Crown, after Diana's death and the aftermath in what I assume will be in the opening few episodes, what we'll also be seeing is past this point in royal history and into the early 2000s. The royals had some dark times in what they called their Annus Horribilis, but unfortunately that's not where the tough times ended, and we can expect to lose not just Princess Diana, but some other beloved royal family members also. You're right. It does seem to have had better days. Even the televisions are metaphors in this place. There will be some cheerful moments, like Prince William meeting Kate Middleton, and we have already had confirmation of the actors playing them. Seen and West, who played William in season 5, and Dominic West's real life son, will be stepping down to make way for older actors playing the prince in different periods. Rufus Camper will be playing a teenage prince. William was just 15 when his mother died, so it will be likely Camper will be playing the role during the earlier episodes covering the aftermath of the tragedy. Although new to on-screen acting, Camper has had many stage roles, including productions on and off West End. The prince will later be aged up to his late teens and early 20s, and will then be played by Ed McVeigh. McVeigh went to the Drama Centre London in 2021 and has since been an understudy in the play Camp Siegfried at the Old Vic in London. 
McVeigh will be playing the prince into the years where he met Kate, who will be played by Meg Bellamy. McVeigh wrote on Instagram, quote, I'm absolutely buzzing to be given the opportunity to play Prince William in the crown in series six, alongside the amazing Meg Bellamy. Gonna be an amazing shoot, can't wait to learn all I can, end quote. Bellamy has had credits in amateur dramas and filmmaking, but is also getting her first on-screen role in The Crown after submitting an audition to a social media call-out. Bellamy posted on Instagram, quote, Pinch me please. So excited to announce that I'll be playing Kate Middleton in Series 6 of Netflix's The Crown. It is such an honour to be joining the most incredible cast and crew, and I will strive to do Kate justice, end quote. The Duke and Duchess met while studying at Scotland's University of St Andrews, and we are likely to see the two walking the hall together in the early stages of their relationship. But unfortunately, there won't be many other heartwarming events due to the royal deaths and worldwide tragedies that were to follow. The early 2000s had major worldwide events such as September 11 and the war in Iraq, so we very well may see the palace's reaction to these events. But closer to home for the royals were the events of 2002. 2002 started with the death of the Queen's sister, Princess Margaret, who died peacefully in her sleep at the age of 71, which obviously would have been a significant loss for the Queen and the royal family as a whole. At this time, the Queen's mother was extremely unwell and frail, however insisted on being there for her daughter's funeral, which she was able to attend at the age of 101. However, in the weeks following Margaret's funeral, the Queen Mother died with the Queen by her bedside. This period will be an extremely emotional one in the show, however, I do feel it will be covered respectfully and with dignity, as we've seen in royal deaths so far in the series. If I had to guess, I think the show's final scenes will be the Queen's Golden Jubilee celebrations, marking her ascending to the throne 50 years earlier. Although the actual anniversary was three days before the death of Princess Margaret, celebrations took place year-round, specifically mid-year. I think that could make for a powerful finale, especially in light of the events that preceded it. But the show apparently will end in 2003, so I guess the exact events of the show's finale are up for discussion. So what do you think? How do you think they'll end the hit show after six seasons? Let me know, I'll be down there in the comments. But if you haven't already, be sure to subscribe for weekly videos covering your favourite movies and TV shows. If you subscribe during this video, then welcome aboard, and if you had a good time hanging out, then spank that like button. This is Matt Rogers, and that is all.